The music industry is changing. Laptop musicians are multiplying like techno rabbits. DJs are created at the press of a play button. Clever names and viral memes now constitute an overnight hit. Welcome to the Equalizer. Welcome to Natural Selection. Welcome to Beat Dice. getting PhDs there, but my whole family's Brazilian. San Francisco was the uh, first place I ever felt like I could get roots and actually stick in one place and try to make a uh, mix-up to myself. So it used to be on, uh, on Fridays, there was an online mailing list called like, uh, what's it called, like sfraves.org, uh, and so I would check that to see what the latest parties were and go to the parties. I am from San Jose. Uh, I go to school in San Diego, College of Applied Technical, and I am studying audio for visual music. It's, it's just amazing. There's pretty much any kind of music you like, you can find it out here. That's what I, that I love about it. And obviously, like the electronic scene has really grown in the last few years. It pretty much died in, in Pittsburgh back when I was back there. The, the radios and all that stuff, that's back when it was still illegal. It was getting shut down. They used to break into the warehouse and illegally, you know, and just throw a party. For a while, it worked. <laughs> I had a friend who had a pair of really terrible turntables and a really terrible radio shack ballistic mixer, but at least they could play records. They couldn't hold its, uh, its uh, pitch, its uh, speed very well, but uh, uh, they took me to a record store, I bought a few records, and I was like, whoa, oh, final? Can I actually tell Mom put me in piano lessons when I was five, and I just kind of got addicted to like making noise, finding sound, doing weird things. And my mom, you know, she definitely regretted the decision when I told her I wanted to be a musician. She's like, what have I done? So being Brazilian and going back and forth between Rio and San Fran, uh, I get to witness these two different, very independent music scenes kind of blossoming in the last few years. I'm like just as into hip hop as I am into bluegrass, as I am into electronica. I guess I started in like middle school, like just joining like middle school band, playing saxophone and things like that. But it kind of turned into playing guitar and metal bands and going through all that scene, punk rock, kind of like garage band style stuff. And, uh, that just involved, uh, being in bands kind of involved me recording demos and recording uh, music digitally. Uh, what kind of gear do you use? What's your setup look like? Um, right now I'm currently working on a 21 inch Mac. I'm working uh, mainly with Ableton Live. Uh, I have a, just a 16 channel mixer. It's mainly what I'm on right now. Well, Ableton's my brain, so I run everything through that. And then I have a Novation X Station, which is my keyboard I play all this stuff on. And uh, my APC40, I trigger clips from, sometimes my touch able. And also a uh, Roland Hand Sonic, sometimes if I'm gonna play some hand drums. What kind of gear do you use in your uh, production setup? Um, I run a Mac Mini and a MacBook, kind of tandem link back and forth. Um, I just a lot of in-the-box uh, plugins and things like that. I run Logic. And, uh, yeah, it's a lot of massive, a lot of native instruments, a lot of things like that. I do have a ton of synths. There is the uh, Future Retro 777, the Alpha Juno 2, Port Electrides, Port Monotron. So I use a laptop that is near and dear to my heart. It's an ADK Pro Audio. I use an Axiom 49 and a Core 2 controller that's a native instruments controller, and then an FCB 1010 
foot control with that. Uh, David Smith instruments. Uh, I have uh, one of their mono revolver keyboards. I have uh, their Tempest uh, drum machine. I use a hammer electric guitar. And so I take up about as much space as like a keyboard player would normally take, but I get to make about as much sound as a full band. So do you have any uh, major influences that got you into making music? I'd say initially, yeah, it would be uh, Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails, because his music's amazing, and I, then I found out he was doing it all himself, and uh, that's what I wanted to do. Um, I would say one of my most early influences would have to be Young L. Um, his production was just so unique to me. It was just way out in left field, and just that whole bass movement, just being different and being yourself is just what really influences me, try to be diverse and versatile. For me, probably the biggest influence is Fish. They're a band that, uh, in terms of process work, I try to emulate. They, they really delve deep and give their audience an extra something out of every experience, and I find that really important. And how much experience do you have playing live in front of crowds? Live in front, it depends on what you mean by live. I play tons of DJ sets live, but uh, as far as doing live PAs, I'm really into like the process of making music and like actually playing every instrument part. Uh, I've played gigs like as a rapper, like performing live, you know, on the mic and stuff. And I've also like DJ little uh, bars and stuff where I'm just on my computer, just DJing basically on live and uh, just queuing up songs top 40 and mixing my stuff in there with this stuff. So I feel like it feels really hollow. If after like 30 seconds or a minute, you're like, this is literally the exact same thing. For me though, the whole one man band experiment is to create a setup that I can create music in, in real time and respond to what's happening and not have to feel like, oh, this is awkward because I have my nine songs that I'm going to play, but none of them really seem like they're right for you guys. But here we go. <laughs> Got any uh, long-term goals for music? What's your plan? Yeah, for sure. One of my biggest long-term long goals, you know, I mean, quit the nine to five and just make music full time. I'd love to just tour the world and play my music and, you know, hopefully get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> I have this dream of creating kind of a bridge label between both places to get musicians in both places collaborating and then bringing musicians from one place to the other in kind of a, a large joint collective that gets festivals going and shows going in both places and kind of grows a music community and creates that bridge. How about high pressure situations? There may be some time constraints, might be a little bit of pressure here, is that okay with you? Yeah, that's all good. I mean, I got, as long as I got a beer and some greens, I'm good. <laughs> I think I'm better under pressure. Uh, I, I would love, I, I love it. I need more of it. Well, thanks a lot, James. Thanks. Yeah, my pleasure. Nice to meet you guys. Awesome. We start the competition off tonight with a quick beat challenge. Each of our contestants will be provided with a Zoom H4N field recorder. They will have five minutes to head outside of the beat studios and collect as many samples as they can. 